Let's talk a little bit about Excel in the context of business intelligence. Excel is one of the most unique data sources as it's entirely unstructured. Now suppose you're using SQL, PostgreSQL, OLAP, literally anything that would be considered a database. Well, in this case, a certain degree of structure is going to be enforced by those systems. Excel? Nope. You can do anything. You can put data anywhere and structure it any way you'd like. You could even start recording historical data, stop, put something completely different in the middle, and then just keep going. There are no rules, and it can make using Excel really fun when you're trying to use it as a data source for BI. To make matters worse, most people who are using these for a quick test of a data visualization platform will use Excel as a data source. If you compound rough data with a platform that you're not familiar with, you're probably in for a suboptimal experience. Let's look at some common structural issues that I regularly see with Excel that should be cleaned up before trying to use with any business intelligence tool. I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. For a quick, why does this matter? Business intelligence tools rely on a certain degree of structure to make reporting easy for you. While it's certainly possible to ignore some of the suggestions that I'm about to make, the better you can format your data, the less work you're gonna to have to do in the BI tool to make it more usable. Now they say hard work never killed anyone, but why take the chance? Let's make this easy. The ultimate goal of your Excel data will to make it resemble something like a traditional database structure as closely as possible. Now, if you're unclear what this means, here's a table in my SQL Server database, and you can see how it's simply a column header at the top, data underneath. This is basically what you want to get to. Each seat in Excel should be a table of related information, and you should remove anything that is non-data. You'll also want to make sure that every column in your Excel file has a consistent data type. As you read down the column, you can't go from numbers to text or from raw numbers to a percentage. You want to make sure that one theme is being used per column. If you have multiple aspects of the data that you want to provide, just add a new column to it and go from there. Excel also has this concept of data types, which they call number formatting. And you should use this. By telling Excel what you want to format your numbers as, text, dates, various types of numbers, you can give your BI tool a clue in terms of how it should use that data that it's using. If everything is simply set to text, the BI tool has to take a guess at the type of data that you're using. And if it has to take a guess, then you probably are going to be forced to map it correctly if it's not right. You should also avoid any unnecessary pivoting. You'll see this a lot with dates and sometimes categories. Instead of segmenting your data across each part of the date, add a single date field or category and have additional rows to cover everything that you've got. It completely makes sense why you would want to do this in Excel for readability purposes, but databases simply don't structure things this way. I should probably also say that some tools like Dundas BI can pivot and unpivot your data in the provided data layer but we're trying to reduce the amount of steps that you need to use in the BI tool where at all possible. So better to structure correct the first time. While I'm on the subject of dates, do be sure to use full dates as your source. Sometimes I'll see dates provided in multiple columns, like a year column, a month column, a day column. And in this case, you should combine them together. BI tools actually can add a lot of functionality if you use proper dates. For example, you can gain things like period over period comparison, drill down, drill through, forecasting, and even level aggregation, and it's worth doing. Also, if you don't have enough precision to provide a full date, just fill it in. For example, if you're collecting one data point a month, well, set the date to be the first of the month or the 15th or something. Just make sure that it's a full date structure, and that'll be good enough. It'll work great. Also, it's worth taking a moment to mention aggregation. Aggregation is the process of rolling up data and most of the time, you want to provide data in as raw a format as possible. This will allow your BI tool to roll up the values to give you summary information, while simultaneously allowing you to unroll those values if you want to drill down into specific detail. If you provide data that's too summarized, well, there's nothing to drill down into. Now, I should probably also mention that there is a point where data can be too raw, and in the case of raw data, you might be introducing 
performance issues because of the amount of work that needs to go into rolling it up. But if you're using Excel, you're probably not running into that scenario. Someone who's running into data issues that it's too raw are usually people who have gigabytes of data in more traditional databases. But just be aware it's a thing. Now, one more thing. Don't add totals or subtotals to your Excel files. BI tools do this for you. And adding these will simply cause your report to double or triple the amount of times you see the same number when it's adding up that column. So that can cause issues too. So that's it. Keep it simple, get rid of the decoration, and think of it like a database. If you do this, your Excel and BI experience will be significantly more fruitful. Now, if you're watching this, I'm guessing that you're just beginning to get into BI and you're probably finding it pretty confusing in terms of which BI vendor to choose. If you're in that boat, I'd recommend taking a look at a video we did called Questions to Ask When Evaluating a Flexibility in a BI Tool. A video like this can help make sure that you're checking all the boxes while you evaluate. Good luck, and thanks for watching.